Welcome back to Science Click. Today, the vacuum. In common terms, emptiness refers to the lack of any visible matter. We say, for example, that a glass is empty from the moment it does not contain any liquid. In reality, from a fundamental point of view, the glass is never truly empty. On the contrary, it holds a gigantic number of air molecules, billions and billions of them, which make up a gas undetectable by the naked eye, but which is a real and concrete sort of matter. To realise certain experiments, it can be beneficial to factor out the air in our environment, whose presence might be disturbing. This is what we call creating a vacuum. To achieve this result, air must effectively be pumped out and extracted from the object that contains it. In practical terms, it remains impossible to achieve perfect vacuums. However, we can get very close thanks to modern techniques which enable us to reduce the quantity of particles thousands of billions of times over. Having said this, the most extreme vacuum which can be obtained in a laboratory is still very far from absolute emptiness. In the best case scenario, there remain a few billion particles per cubic meter. If we want to find a space even emptier than those we can create in a lab, it is necessary to leave the Earth as atmosphere and travel into space. In the space that exists between planets, in our solar system for example, particles are very rare. We can only count a few dozen million per cubic meter. However, it is in intergalactic space, meaning space that exists between galaxies, that we come across almost complete emptiness, with only around one single particle per cubic meter on average. With such a small matter density, we would need to have a container the size of our entire planet, to have as many particles as in a simple glass of water. In a perfect vacuum, with total absence of matter, certain properties which we take for granted no longer hold. Firstly, if we tried to play the guitar in a vacuum, it would be impossible to make any sound, as the vibration of the strings would not be able to travel through the air to reach our ears. More generally said, in the absence of any form of matter to restitute vibrations, sound cannot travel through empty space. Moreover, at the Earth's surface, the atmosphere exerts a weight, with which it pushes down on the objects it contains. This equates to a colossal amount of compression force. This force corresponds to the weight of two adult elephants for each square meter. This is what we call atmospheric pressure. If we do not feel this pressure in our daily lives, it is because our bodies and most objects also generate an internal pressure directed towards the exterior, which opposes the atmospheric pressure perfectly. Let's consider a plastic bottle in which we create a vacuum by pumping out the air it contains. Now that it is empty, the bottle can no longer resist outside pressure because it no longer contains anything. It will therefore get violently compressed by the weight of the atmosphere. Finally, an empty space does not really have a temperature. Indeed, what we call temperature is the degree to which particles are agitated in a certain environment. In air, for instance, it is warmer when air molecules are more agitated, and colder when they are less agitated. But in an empty space, in the absence of particles, it is impossible to measure any agitation level, because there are no particles. As such, the concept of temperature loses its meaning. In a vacuum, heat can only be propagated through light and other electromagnetic waves, which are the only waves capable of travelling in empty space. Let us now think about the idea of emptiness, not at the human scale, but at the microscopic scale. All matter is made up of atoms. An atom is made up of a nucleus, around which electrons orbit. The nucleus is about 100,000 times smaller than the atom in its whole, but it represents by itself 99.9% .9 of the total mass of the atom. As such, atoms are made up mostly of empty space, which means that all visible matter in the universe is also made of empty space. To conclude, even the emptiest of spaces will never be perfectly empty. 
According to quantum physics, the vacuum state is one constantly filled with a multitude of virtual particles, which perpetually pop in and out of existence. These are known as vacuum fluctuations. A virtual particle is a particle whose existence is so short-lived that it is completely impossible for us to observe it. Indeed, the laws of quantum mechanics say that it's possible for such particles to appear out of nothing, with the condition that they disappear very quickly, such that it be impossible to observe them. Since virtual particles cannot be observed, they are allowed to possess some very strange properties, which go against the laws of traditional physics. For example, there is the fact that they can appear out of nothing, or that some can possess a negative energy. Although it is impossible to observe them, the existence of these virtual particles brings about some concrete and measurable phenomena. These particles are actually the carriers of the four fundamental interactions in our universe. For example, it is by the exchange of virtual photons that electrical charges are able to interact at a distance. These particles also have indirect effects, like the fact that they exert a certain pressure on objects. They are also involved in what is known as Hawking's radiation. When black holes evaporate over time as a result of their strong gravitational pull which converts virtual particles into ordinary ones. Today, we think that the quantum energy contained in empty space could very well be somewhat similar to dark energy, a famous type of unknown energy which tends to accelerate the expansion of our universe. However, when we compare its intensity with that of dark energy, we find a number which is ten thousands of billions of Googles of times too big. This is one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of modern science, what is known as the vacuum catastrophe.